How do you keep yourself focused? When I get off track for one day, I tend to throw in the towel and it takes me weeks to get rededicated again. Ah, hashtag welcome to life, right? <laughs> so um, keeping yourself focused. Uh, there are so many personality types in this world, right? And, and the worst thing that I could do is tell you, well, suck it up. Like, because I'm a, I'm a naturally driven person. I can't explain where my drive comes from. It's just innate. And I, it's exciting to me. And I like lists and I like accomplishment. I like gold stars for myself. And that's not fair for me to say, like, you just need to do those things. But I just want to give you some ideas and suggestions that have been very helpful for other people. Uh, and that would be number one. Alarms in your phone are wonderful because they remind you of what you want. You have to remember that most of the time you will not feel like doing what you have made a goal to do. 90 to 95% of the time. Once you make an initial decision, you set a goal, you're like, I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to start going to the gym. I'm going to get really fit. I'm going to, I mean, my recent thing is like, I'm going to be a competitive rock climber. And then the next day I'm like, yeah, right. No, I'm done. I'm going back to my like yoga dance thing. Right. And so, so uh, who knows? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll visit that. <clears throat> but the emotion, when we say it, that dissipates. And unfortunately, a lot of people expect that emotion to be consistent. And so they're like, well, I just don't feel like working out today. I don't feel like prepping my meals. I don't feel like eating that food that I prepped. And guess what? 90 to 95% of the time when you don't feel like doing it, you discipline yourself and you say, I will do it because that's who I am. And that comes from... Um, a lot of times you need to sit down, you need to write a constitution for yourself. You need to write a code of conduct. So I would recommend, number one, think about that. Think about sitting down with a journal and saying, who am I? What do I expect of myself? Where's my discipline at? What would I like to accomplish? And what type of person would I like to be known for in five years? Uh, oftentimes we think a little too big and we think like lifetime accomplishments. Like, no, like, whoop, whittle it down a little bit. Think about here and now, two or three months maybe. Uh, another thing is the alarm in the phone to go off once a week on a Sunday night. I've been preaching this for six years. Set your weekly goals in four categories. You got to have a little whiteboard or you need to get a three by five card and write down one specific goal. Now, the thing is, this is not like something you want to achieve. No, it's something you are going to do that will lead into what you want to have accomplished or achieved by the end of the week. And so one in nutrition, one in fitness, one in mindset and one in spirituality. Now, spirituality is not religion. I'm not going to go into that right now. But spirituality can be something as simple as I'm going to meditate for three minutes a day. Wonderful app to download insights. Go download it. Wonderful meditation tool. Um, you know, and it, and it could be something like I have 100 people who on Facebook on my personal timeline, like I did this Power 15 challenge. If any of you guys are doing it, like do it. It's incredible. And that could be a wonderful goal to do for seven days. Um, when you set specific goals, what happens on a cognitive level? It's about an getting the inertia of just like sitting there and not doing anything. It's about building confidence. Our brain is naturally programmed. When you have a small win, it wants another win. And so the key is not to set those as huge things. It could be a sim something as simple as I am going to eat leafy greens at lunch every day this week for fitness. I am going to focus on squeezing the 10th rep of every rep I do, or I am going to put out my tennis shoes by the door so I actually go walking after work. Uh, it could be something very simple, but it needs to be something that you can actually do that will facilitate the accomplishment you want to have at the end of the week. And you repeat, 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 and you, the key is you've got to see those goals every single day. In my book, I talk about three places you need to have your goals. You need to have them on the dashboard of your car, you need to have them on the fridge, and you need to have them on your bathroom mirror. Those are three wonderful places that will keep you focused. You're there a lot. And if you see them, it's all about prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is the part of your brain, is the stage of your brain. And so if you are expecting yourself to remember everything and do everything, it's not going to happen. You have to program into your day. That's why alarms are so amazing. You need to program in 
the opportunity for those thoughts to come and ding you over the head and be like, oh yeah, that's what you want. Oh yeah, that's who you are. Affirmations. I literally just got off a coaching call where I had one of my alarms go off to do a little mental check on something and uh, I shared it with her and she's like, oh my gosh, why don't I have that alarm in my phone? I said, why don't you? Go set it. You know, and it's, so it's just the little things. What do you bring into your mind? And so perhaps it's what's the outcome? That's what Tony Robbins always talks about. What's your outcome of what you want? decrease the time that you stay down and I will just throw in on the emotional level um, knock it off for shaming yourself for not being perfect knock it off stop it like that's that's not gonna serve you and I know that we all feel like oh that makes that that's like gonna push me into being better and I'm gonna say no that's gonna program you into a lot of negativity True progression does not come from hate and loathing. It comes from love, compassion, and encouragement. And so use those words, use those phrases, use those voices in your mind, set those weekly goals, and just seek to decrease the number of days until you get going again. Uh, don't wait till Monday. Make it a rule that you will break the status quo. You will never start something new on a Monday. You will never start the next morning. You will go completely against the grain by starting on a Thursday. You will go against the grain by starting at 2.37 p.m. Go against the grain, break the mold, and you will find a lot more success in getting and staying rededicated. Hi, I'm Christy Joe. I'm a mind and body strategist, and I want to invite you to come get my book. But you know what? The book is long, and sometimes we don't want to read, so I've made it into a cheat sheet basically the Cliff's Notes version of the book, the most important principles you need to know and start applying today. So come on over, get your free download. And as you apply the principles in this cheat sheet, you are going to start feeling so much more confident, feeling like this is actually doable. Strategic nutrition is different from just healthy eating. And there are explanations for why you're feeling the way you're feeling. All of the advice you've been given over the years that hasn't worked for you. I'm going to provide so much clarity to all of that. So come join me, get your free cheat sheet. And I can't wait to help you on your journey to power your body. Let's do it one meal, one workout, one day at a time.